to talk a little bit about game management and what game management is. We hear about game management all the time. Everyone speaks about game management. Players talk about game management and how you manage a game. Coaches do and referees do. So often after the game, it's spoken about, you know, you had good game management, you had poor game management. But I don't think it's ever defined what game management is. So I want to talk a little bit about that. For me, good game management is about bringing the game to a safe conclusion in whatever way that you decide to do that. And I actually think game management is the art of refereeing. Um, it's those unquantified things that maybe aren't in the laws of the game that you do that actually get you through to the end of the game. What game management isn't is about pleasing other people. Um, I think sometimes we think game management is choosing not to caution a player because it's, you know, it just wasn't the right thing to do. And do you know what? That may be the case, but often it's about doing what we think as a referee, not doing something for somebody else. So if you're doing something for the benefit of the observer or you're doing something for the benefit of the clubs, that's probably not game management. That's actually you um, circumventing, you know, and... For me, a lot of game management comes from the gut. And I'll talk about a couple of examples where I've sort of employed game management um, in other areas. And it's always been for me as the referee. It's not been for somebody else. And I think it's important when I come off a field of play, I'm often self-analyzing myself and saying, well, do you know what? I think I've, I, I went with my instincts there. And uh, often it's when you don't go with your instincts and you're trying to please somebody else that maybe game management comes out. Um, thinking about examples of game management in, in my career, one of the ones that sticks in my mind the most was a match that was, um, it was a feature match of the day and there was a player that I was aware from, ironically, pretty much preparation, but also from talking to colleagues, uh, had lost a family member, a young family member. And this player's first game back scored a goal and revealed the slogan on the shirt after having scored a goal. So there's an argument to say that player still should be cautioned, but that just didn't sit right with me. Um, and I know there's arguments to say the referee's got to do the job and things like that. Didn't remove the shirt totally, but um, sort of uh, showed a slogan. For me, in the spirit of the game and game management, not showing a yellow card there, achieves a lot it's uh, we talk about respect for me a respectful thing is acknowledging that that is a key part of that person's life it's far far beyond football and not cautioning was the right thing to do and I know with the observer we had a really detailed and, and quite good conversation around that um, but for me I felt coming off I'd done the right thing and irrespective of whether that uh, isn't you know in line with the laws of the game for me it was going with the gut to say this is in the interest of the game, the wider game. Um, and I thought that was a good example of game management that I think people can see on both sides. But for me, the considerations there that not issuing a yellow card was the right thing to do. Um, I think it's also about uh, using your experience. And, but again, going from the gut, I, um, I remember I was refereeing... Uh, quite early on in my uh, Premier League career um, and it had been a difficult enough game and I gave a penalty in the 89th minute against a player. Um, contentious penalty, it was, it was a handball, so it was, it was quite difficult and it was, it was probably as um, loud as I've heard a crowd dissent against one of my decisions. And again, in the 93rd minute, the team who... Um, I'd gone one all, actually went two one up. And I remember the player going towards the crowd, maybe hugging a few people in the crowd and my quite inexperienced fourth official saying, yellow card, yellow card for the over celebration. I think he climbed on the fence there. Now I knew in the back of my mind he was already on a yellow card in the 93rd minute. Um, for me, game management there was walking back to the penalty to the, for the restart and knowing what players want to caution. And I think that's a vital part of game management. It's a very, very difficult subject to approach. What's the first yellow card and what's the second yellow card? Because I know a lot of players say, well, a second yellow card will be exactly the same. For me, second yellow cards are a big part of game management and knowing what offences are definitely a second yellow card and what offences can maybe be managed for the good of the game again. 
And I say it's a really, really challenging one, but uh, one that, again, from a preparation point of view, knowing who's on a yellow card, if you have colleagues with you, getting them to remind you. And it's a really, really key part of the game. So another part of game management is how you manage yourself as a referee. Um, we've spoken about in, in uh, different areas, confidence. I can think of games where my confidence has been really, really um, tested. Um, and managing how you approach a game is really, really uh, challenging. There's a big thought around, and I've, heard, I've had conversations with colleagues around, do you want to know when you've made a mistake? So we have every possibility of checking our phones. I know, you know, with different leagues have protocols about not checking phones. Often clips are on by half time. So as a referee, do you want to know if you've made a mistake? My advice would be no. Um, subconsciously, it's very, very challenging to manage at half time knowing you've made a mistake and not taking that into the second half. For me, much like uh, from week to week with decisions, once you've made a decision, that has to be parked. And that's really challenging because you're going from one minute on to the next decision, but you have to be ready for that next decision and you have to accept. I've heard too many people asking for confirmation from colleagues and saying, did I get that right? You know, for me, trying to explain a decision. For me, once you've made a decision, the self-analysis starts at the final whistle. It doesn't start before the next decision. And I know it may be great to get some affirmation to say, yeah, I thought you got that right. But what happens when you say to your colleagues, did I get that right? And you get silence back straight away. That's going to give your confidence a knock. So for me, you just have to move on to the next decision. The only time I've ever checked at half time was when um, assistant referee had given me a call and thought, well, had been told at half time that he got the wrong player. I was 99% sure that he had the right player. And we checked at half time. Looking back and debriefing that, um, it was a real risk and one that was worth taking at the time because it settled the assistant referee. But I think now and say, well, what happened if we found out we got the wrong player? How would that have affected us going forward? And I think it's 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 a real it should be a real real exception rather than a rule that you you check things like that. I did that for what I thought was the good of my assistant referee. It worked that time. But I can see how in many other situations it uh, it wouldn't work. Confidence is a massive thing in refereeing. Um, I've seen colleagues that have let one decision affect the rest of the game, particularly if it's early on in the game. Part of our mental strength, our mental fitness is about being able to process things quickly and process disappointment quickly, as I've talked about in the past. And sometimes you'll have to do that on the field of play. You will have that gut reaction in there that, uh, that you've got a decision right. You'll have a gut reaction in there sometimes that actually you'll be saying, I'm not sure if I got that right or not. One of the most important skills in refereeing is learning how to leave that until the end of the game. Start dealing with that at the end of the game because you know what? You could have 60 more minutes, 80 more minutes where you have to work through a game and you cannot be going around with that little doubt in your head. I often found that when managing anxiety that was often started from that little doubt in my head or that little voice that said, well, what about this? There will be naturally human nature saying, did you get that right? you've got to be able to manage that and you've got to be able to switch that off. And I find by focusing on the next decision and getting the next decision right and getting the next decision after that, if you get three decisions in a row correct, that voice will be quietened. And all of a sudden your confidence is saying, well, you know what, you got those three right, so maybe you got that wrong. But it's such an important skill to develop as a referee. Um, Self-doubt is, is a dangerous thing to have in there. And if you've got a voice in your head, it's very much like... Um, I developed a technique, I'm terrible for losing things. And the first thing you do when you, when you lose your keys in the morning is say, I can't find my keys. So when you say, I can't find my keys, your mind's saying, no, you can't. And actually, quite often when you're searching for your keys, your keys is actually sitting right in front of you. But you're telling yourself that you can't do something. You're telling yourself that you have lost your keys. So your mind will go, okay, I've lost my keys. If your mind is saying, I got that decision wrong, the word that stands out there to your mind is wrong. So the next decision, it's more likely you're going to get that wrong. And again and again, and it spirals. So actually saying, right, okay, let's focus on the 100 decisions in this game that I've got right is far better than focusing on the one decision you may have got wrong. And actually, you may get to the final whistle and look at it, and you got it right. 
So it's about adopting that positive mindset and moving on to the correct decisions. I, there are techniques that you can use outside of actually focusing on the next decision. One thing I always do, uh, strangely, is um, would adjust my whistle. So I have a, a lanyard on there. And for me, if I have times of stress, I actually would sort of adjust my whistle up and down as a restock moment. Um, I know different referees have said they've got so one. I know always adjust the shorts if they're in a situation where they are. They'll always pull the shorts up because in their mind it is... You know, I'm, I'm pulling my shorts up, pulling my socks up. Um, I actually went through a period where I had, um, it was actually one of my daughter's uh, hair bands on my hand. So if I, if I had a bit of stress, I would use this actually outside of refereeing as well. I would pluck that once because it's a little sharp shock. So if I was um, sort of feeling stressed, both on and off the pitch, I could take that and that would be a little click to say, right, okay, refocus, keep strong. I think it's good to have something that you take out there with you so something you can say right okay i need to restock i need to reset i need to recalibrate and, and find where i am that could be simply by telling yourself something or thinking about something or it is good to have a visual or sort of stimulus somewhere in there that it could be that i don't know you take a yellow card out and put it back in just something that triggers a refocus um, the hairband one worked really well for me because, again, it was a reminder of my daughter, which was a positive side of my life. Um, often, you know, why I'm doing a lot of things and what I focus on. So that was a really good one for me to just refocus and uh, get into a calmer mindset. Mm-hmm.